Whoa, a car right on the wrong side of the road. Jesus. <laughs> well, uh, that was a close one. <laughs> So, back in the XK8, uh, I haven't actually driven this car for a little while. Um, a couple of sort of niggling things that I need to sort out. And uh, in my previous video about my MG on my way over here, I kind of said about how I want to do more uh, trips in both of my cars. So, planning on doing a, a bit of a longer drive in this car next weekend, which will be a, another video or a couple of videos, if depending on how much footage I get. Uh, hopefully, quite an exciting uh, trip that I'm doing. Um, so two things that need sorting out on this car today. One is the uh, J-gate issue. So before Christmas, I kind of mentioned that after I got the car back from uh, its bodywork and that kind of thing, um, I had this intermittent uh, issue whereby the um, gear indicator on the on the J-gate would flash and I'd lose sport mode and manual selection of gears. So I thought this was to do with a low battery voltage and it kind of comes and goes. But I don't think it is battery voltage and I think it's something to do with the actual inner workings of the J-Gate electronics. So before Christmas I did actually um, get this thing apart, checked all the electrical connections to this uh, box uh, which has all the sort of electronic uh, wizardry for the uh, selection of gears. So I think it's called the linear switch or something like that. Um, I checked all electrical connections, uh, they all seem fine. The car was working for a bit and then the issue came back again. Uh, and what I should have done at the time is actually uh, open up this electronic box uh, really on the forums you can open it up with like a little Torx screw and uh, give it a little bit of a spray of um, uh, electrical contact uh, cleaner so that's what I'm going to try and do today see if it fixes my my problem um, or at least makes it a bit more uh, rare for it to crop up. Um, I will probably switch to some video I took before Christmas when I took this thing apart the first time um, and show you how I uh, kind of disassemble um, the sort of centre console and get to the inner workings of the uh, of the J-Gate um, because I'm under a bit of time pressure today because the second thing I'm doing today is getting the uh, tyres changed so at the moment I've got these uh, Nankang tyres I think people call them Nankang ditch finders um, I found them to be fine actually they're not too bad but kind of want to get some premium uh, tyres on this car because it kind of warrant you know it deserves to have some better tires and it probably you know will reduce road noise and that kind of thing and give me a bit of a uh, better grip uh, the other thing is that my um near side front tire has a uh, sort of a, a crack or a gouge in the sidewall which is a bit unsafe so i'm kind of a bit wary about going long distances in this thing with the tires in that condition so brand new tires today uh i've got an appointment um this morning so need to crack on with this uh j gate uh, issue and see if i can get that resolved so uh, yeah, here goes. Okay, so that was uh, slightly trickier than I hoped for, and actually the uh, the state of my uh, pub local pub loyalty card has uh, taken a, a bit of a battering. Um, but essentially, inside the uh, the rim of the of the gear thing, you kind of put this in between that and the plastic, and kind of run it around the outside and sort of wiggle it past uh, and push down, and you kind of release these tabs. That click out so it just takes a little jiggling and I think patience is the key because you don't want to like damage anything um, but the first thing I'm going to check is this electrical connector here which um, is the sport button so I don't know if that's maybe something to do with my problem but what I've seen in, in the forums is it's most likely something actually underneath the uh, gear selector itself so let's uh, let's have a play around with this and uh, see what we can see right so as I'm, as I'm digging around in here I've actually found an extra connector near where the sport button is. And I wonder if that is um, for the automatic speed limiter. That was an option on these cars. So the switch on an, for the automatic speed limiter, I think, was to the left of the sport button. So it looks like the wiring's actually in place for for such a thing. And, I'm, and I doubt that's the cause of my problems, but I wonder what happens if I switch them over where something would happen whether they would fit, whether that connector would fit in there or not. That would um, that would be strange if, if you could actually swap them over and you can get the automatic speed limiter instead of sport mode. That would be pretty interesting. But um, I guess I guess in theory they could have plugged the wrong plug in there. Um, that's one thing I could try. Uh, the other thing I noticed is that actually down there, I don't know if you can see in there, you probably can't. 
there's a, a washer that's fallen off that um, I need to retrieve. I don't think that's caused my problem, but it can't be good that there's some metal bits rattling around in there. So we'll have a look at that as well um, before I try and take this all apart. Okay, so J Jaguar, I think, have anticipated this. They've actually made the connector different. You can see on this one, at the top, there's like a little, uh, looks like a little extra bit on that left-hand side. And on the other switch, it's on the, the right-hand side, so you can't actually insert this into the wrong switch. Um, but it does does make me think that may maybe the maybe the option is, is there just to plug in a switch and it might work. I mean, I, I don't know whether like any additional... Um, Sort of hardware and stuff is required to activate the speed limiter um, it must be just electronic some sort of ecu type thing so maybe if i got a surround which had uh, the extra switch in it might actually work work like a retrofit type of type of thing but um yeah like i said in my options video i mean i'm not really fussed about the automatic speed limit but it's interesting that all the wiring's there so who knows who knows what would happen if uh, you plug a switch in, into that it might might be like a freebie i guess but uh yeah um not the cause of my problems, I think. So one of the things I'm not sure I filmed last time is actually removing the uh, centre console once you've got the uh, gear surround off. So it's only actually four bolts uh, with kind of a Torx head. Um, two are located here just underneath the Radio 1, two. And the other two are located uh, behind a panel here. So you kind of pop off this bit of trim and there's two uh, two bolts here as well and then once these are undone it allows you to take the whole thing up and you can remove it from the car to give you better access to the uh to the stuff inside the gearbox now or the gear um lever rather it's this box here which has all the um, electric sort of gubbins inside and we want to get the cover off of this and spray some uh spray some uh cleaner inside and see if that makes a makes a difference so with that center console safely out of the way you have to remember to make sure you undo these um electrical connectors from underneath the uh, um, ashtray because these are the uh, cigarette lighter and the um, and the light that's, that's in there. So you have to make sure you disconnect these, otherwise you risk sort of pulling it out or damaging something. So remember that. Um, and I actually lost a couple of washers in here the last time I did some work and I thought, oh, I'm going to have to take this apart again anyway. I'll get them next time. But driving it around a bit, I think they've... <laughs> They must have uh, found their way into some nook or cranny somewhere. So there's going to be something floating around uh, the inside of this car now, unfortunately. Uh, but I don't think they were too important. They, they went on here, the washers, and I think they just kind of made the uh, the chrome surround fit a bit more snugly. So I'll get some replacements for those at some point if I can't locate the ones that I lost. So yeah, next step is to take this cover off here using these tiny little screw screws that are on the on the on the front there so now i've got the cover off you can kind of see a little bit more of the mechanism inside there and you can sort of see these copper uh sort of tabs that run along like a metal track it's hard to sort of film because it's quite tiny and i'm wondering whether these are a bit bad and uh dirty so I'm going to try and clean them up a bit um one thing i did do before i'm going to start spraying anything is disconnect this multi-plug this is like the electrical connector for this uh sort of circuit board and everything so uh, i'm going to give it a little spray with um this stuff electrical contact cleaner so uh hopefully i don't like short anything out and break stuff further but yeah fingers crossed this does the trick and i'm and i'm back to all my manual selection of gears and sport mode which i'm sorely missing from time to time at the moment Mm -mm. So, uh, reassembled everything after cleaning stuff, and I've still got the dreaded flashing P. So, that hasn't cured whatever it is I had. Um, I did sort of reset codes and stuff, and there wasn't really anything on there anyway. So, yeah, a bit of a mystery, really, what, what's going on there. It, might, it could just be that that electronic module is just completely broken, and even cleaning it is not going to make any difference. Uh, so probably the next step for me is to take this to a, a garage and get them to to diagnose what's actually wrong with it. It's kind of beyond my uh, expertise, um, but I'm not worried about it. It drives fine uh, even with this sort of flashing stuff. So I don't think it's um, going to stop me using the car. It's just annoying that I lose my uh, sport mode and, and gears from time to time. Um, so yeah, a bit, bit disappointing, but now I need to pack everything away and, and get over to 
uh, the tire place to get some get some new tires so hopefully that goes a little bit better right so i've just picked up my car from the tire shop and uh, the tires i went for were michelin pilot sport fours um because uh, they people sort of rave about these tires on various cars and i thought i'd give them a, a go and they're going to be a bit of a, a step up from my uh, sort of budget tires i suppose uh, the first thing i've noticed is actually the road noise is a lot less um but i haven't really had an opportunity to give them a bit of a workout oh a car right on the wrong side of the road jesus <laughs> well uh that was a close one <laughs> Um, but yeah, as I was saying, I haven't really given these uh, tyres much of like a workout because they're sort of new and I've only just got them. Um, but I thought I'd give it a little blast down uh, this country lane, um, hoping that no more vans sort of come the opposite way on the wrong side of the road, uh, just to see how they do, like see how well they grip and stuff. What I'm really missing is uh, manual selection of gears, which would have been perfect really for a little test drive because I like to sort of keep it in second when I'm on these sorts of roads because second takes you up to sort of six and unfortunately that's when the camera inside the car stopped recording um I'm still talking to the camera like a, an idiot um but essentially what I was saying was um for country roads I kind of lock it into second because you can get up to I think it red lines at about 70 miles an hour not that you'd go that fast in second generally but going between second and third is perfect for sort of country roads um so i mean the tires felt great as i said road noise is greatly reduced uh it was a sort of damp road you couldn't really tell um whether i had significantly more grip or not so i don't tend to sort of go mad anyway um but yeah, the safety aspect of not having that gouge in the side of the, the tyre is, is reassuring. Um, and that's basically it. So uh, pleased with my tyres, but a little bit disappointing on the uh, J-Gate fix uh, front of um, the video. I mean, I will have to try and either rethink what I'm going to do about that. So I'm either going to have to try and replace that faulty module myself or find a garage. I'd rather try and do it myself so I can bring out a... Uh, another video sort of showing how I eventually fixed it if I ever do fix it um, but yeah so that, that's it for this video um, next week uh, I've got a, a good video on a trip that I did in my XK so this was sort of preparing for it and then next week is the the actual video of, of my of my trip so I hope that you'll uh, join me for that one and um, thank you very much for watching and I will see you again soon bye <laughs>